Hello everyone, today we are going to teach you how to OC X58 like a pro and get the most out of your i7 or Xeon without frying it. Disclaimer, I am not responsible for any damage to the CPU or motherboard, it is your responsibility only. That being said, what are you going to need? A decent 500 to 550 watt PSU, a decent X558 board, if you have your M heatsink it's good, a decent cooler, be that a pretty beefy cooler or an all-in-one water cooler. And of course, this guide. The motherboard that I'll be using is the original P60 from ASUS, not the P60SC, the refresh. The CPUs will be the Nehalem based Quad Core i7-975 and the Westmere based Hexacore Xeon X5650. For CPUs based on 45 nanometer Bloomfield, follow the instructions for the i7 and for CPUs based on the newer 32 nanometer Westmere EP, follow the guidance of the Xeon. Without further ado, let's get into it. So how do we OC? The clock of the CPU is base clock times CPU ratio. Say that we have a 200 BCLK and 20 multiplier, that would mean we have a 4 GHz effective clock. First thing to know about X58 is that overclocking is highly dependent on the BCLK clock or base clock. This clock dictates the speed of not only the CPU but the memory and QPI. Keep this in mind while you overclock. Why? Well, on any X58 CPUs, any QPI speed over 8000 mega transfers per second results in a board not posting. Also, the memory is kinda capped out by the CPU at about 1900 MHz, so any above that is not that doable. Good? Alright. Now, set the CPU ratio to the all core stock ratio for the i7 975 and for the Xeon X5650 20. Start from the setting BCLK to 168 MHz. Set the voltage to about 1.275 volts. Set the QPI slash DRAM voltage to 1.3 to 1.35 volts. This impacts the OC of RAM. Set DRAM bus voltage to 1.6 to 1.65 volts. Do not go past 1.65, it will damage the CPU. Set memory speed at somewhere close to the 1600 MHz mark. Set encore frequency to double the RAM speed, no lower than this. Set QPI to the lowest value, set CPU sped spectrum to disable and set load 9 calibration to or LLC to auto. Now, once you get into the windows, test with Prime95 or IDA stability test. While you test, look at the temps of the CPU with software like Hardware Info 64 or Hardware Monitor. Links to all the software in the description. If your CPU goes past 85 or 87C and into the 90s, reduce the speed of the CPU by about 200 MHz and from there tweak the voltage. After about 10 minutes of stress test, if the system didn't freeze or fail the test, restart and either increase BCLK by 5 or 10 MHz or reduce the voltage by 0.025 volts. Use software like Cinebench R20 to test if you have an increase in performance. Keep an eye on memory frequency as the overclocks too high as that overclocks too, so you might want to reduce it and keep close to the 1600 MHz mark. Very important things to keep up. Max safe core voltage for X58, 1.4 volts. Max safe 24-7 core voltage, 1.375 volts, provided that you have good cooling. Max safe QPI slash DRAM voltage, 1.4 volts. Don't go past. Max safe voltage for DRAM bus. 1.65. Do not go past under any circumstances. If you have, if you need better stability, try to increase the CPU PLL voltage to about 1.88 volts. No more. When BCLK overclocking, increase the speed by 5 MHz increments over the base clock of 133 MHz. BCLK won't go past 218 MHz. At 220 MHz, you hit the 8000 mega transfers per second limit on QPI. Also, multiplier won't usually go past 23. This is the sweet spot. Don't use Intel TurboTech, just set your CPU to the all core multiplier and increase the BCLK from there. Another useful tip Nehlem chips don't necessarily get hotter with voltage. An i7-975 at 3.8 GHz and 1.35 V consumes less power and produces less heat. 
than a 4.2 GHz overclock at 1.275 volts. With Westmere chips like the X5 5650, temps and power usage scales directly with both frequency and voltage. Okay, let's get into the numbers. How did the OC change the performance? The i7 is clocked at 4.14 GHz with an 180 BCLK x 23 multiplier at 1.375 volts and the X5650 it's clocked at 4.26 GHz with 214 MHz BCLK x 20 multiplier at 1.325 volts. First up is CPU-Z. And then Cinebench. And finally gaming. I tested just the i7. Here we can see a sweet 15% uplift in all games, that being with a Vega 56 but still for an increase of fre in frequency of 25%. And that's the end of it. I hope you learned something and that you enjoyed the video. For more, hit subscribe and hit the like button and see you in the next one.